Hey guys, welcome to the Kubernetes series. If you are watching this video, I'm sure that you have a good understanding of containers. If not, I recommend you to learn a container tool like Docker. I have made a detailed video on Docker with complete hands-on. Trust me, if you learn Docker before continuing with this video, you can understand Kubernetes very easily. Well, if we look at the official definition of Kubernetes, Kubernetes is an open source system for automating deployment, scaling and management of containerized applications. Don't worry if this is not self-explanatory. In this video, we will closely look at each word of this definition and understand what Kubernetes is in simple terms. So without any further delay, let's get started. Today we will be discussing what problems does Kubernetes solve? features of Kubernetes and alternatives to Kubernetes. As always, before learning any new technology, first we need to understand the problems we have with the existing approaches and how this new technology solves these problems. With that said, let's start with problem statement 1. Let's say we have containerized our application and deployed it in a node. When I say node, it's a physical system like your laptop or virtual machine like AWS EC2 where Docker is installed. What if there is an error in the container and the container is stopped? Or what if the node itself is crashed? Can we access our service? No. We are talking about one container here. In real time, especially when you move from monolith to microservices, there will be hundreds even thousands of containers running on multiple nodes. We never know when and which container goes down. Can we monitor it manually and restart our stopped containers? Probably we can do that when we have a couple of containers, but it's impossible when we have thousands of containers. So what if there is a way to monitor the health of each container and node and automatically bring them back when they go down? Isn't it amazing without any manual intervention? This is called self-healing or resilience, healing by itself. That's where Kubernetes comes into the picture. Kubernetes checks or monitors the health of each container and node and brings them back when they go down. So we will not face any downtime. We call this I availability, meaning our application is ready to serve requests 24 by 7 if not 99.99% of the time. Now let's look at the problem statement too. Well, we deployed our application and everything is working great. And let us assume your application is working great for 20 requests per second. What your application gets 100 requests per second, 1000 requests per second? I'm sure that it cannot handle that load. What if there is a way to replicate your same application into multiple containers if required across multiple nodes and put a load balancer in front of those containers? So any request made goes to the load balancer and it distributes the load among multiple containers. Now your application can handle that load as your load is shared by multiple containers. Even one step ahead, what if there is a way to increase the number of containers if the load increases and decrease the number of containers if the load decreases. This is called scaling. Kubernetes can do that smart job for us. Kubernetes can scale our application based on the load. Not only scaling containers, but it can scale nodes also. Meaning if there are multiple containers are running in a node, and while creating a new container, if there are not enough resources like CPU and RAM, Kubernetes can automatically spin up another container for us. And Kubernetes can run our containers in a node based on the resources available. This is called automatic bin packing. And if there is no load, it can remove the node which can save lot of cost. Also, if a node crashes, it can move the container to the LD and running node. We can also tell Kubernetes that how much resources a container should use, thanks to Kubernetes. Now let's look at the problem statement 3. Let's say you are working on a product and you are deploying the enhancement multiple times a day. What happens when your deployment is going on? Your old container gets deleted and a new container gets created. In the gap of deleting and creating the container, your application will be down, which is a bad thing of course. If you are aware of rolling updates, you can understand the fix for this. If not, don't worry, I'm here to explain that for you. When you have multiple containers running of the same application, 
instead of deleting all containers at once and creating them again with rolling deployments we can replace the containers one by one that way your application will still serve the request without any downtime and kubernetes can do that for us with kubernetes we can make rolling deployments we can also upgrade a percentage of containers which is called canary deployments by the way to deploy an application in a node you don't need to log into the node and no need to run multiple commands like docker pull docker run etc with a simple command in kubernetes we can automate this now let's look at the problem statement 4 let's say we have our application running with version 1 what if we want to deploy a newer version of our application with just a single command we call this rolling out a new version or what if you want to roll back to an older version if there is an error in the newer version? Kubernetes can take care of that automated rollout and rollbacks with simple commands. Not only this, Kubernetes can do lot of wonders. With Kubernetes, we can deploy and update secrets and application configuration without rebuilding our image and without exposing secrets in your stack configuration. Now that we have good understanding of what we can do with Kubernetes, we will be looking into all these features with complete hands-on in our next sessions. So, a system which manages or orchestrates containers is called Container Orchestration System. In 2014, Google open-sourced this project with the name Kubernetes and now it is being maintained by CNCF. There are different orchestration tools available in the market. The first one is Docker Swarm. This is native to Docker which lacks some advanced features for complex applications. Kubernetes by Google with more advanced features. MesOS by Apache which is very difficult to set up. ECS which is specific to AWS. Out of which Kubernetes is most popular with more advanced features. All cloud providers have native support to Kubernetes. Docker is a container tool that creates the containers whereas Kubernetes is an orchestration tool that manages the containers. Kubernetes use Docker to host the applications in the form of containers. Not only Docker, any other tools are also supported by Kubernetes like Rocket, Cryo, etc. Kubernetes is a Greek word for helmsman. Helmsman meaning a person who steers a ship or boat which carries the containers. This is the reason the Kubernetes logo represents the steering of the ship. We refer to Kubernetes as k s as there are 8 letters between K and S. I am sure that you found it interesting and excited to learn more about Kubernetes. Stay tuned to look at the architecture of Kubernetes. My name is Pavan Iltapu and I thank you very much for watching this video. If you liked it, please share it with your friends and do not forget to subscribe to my channel to not miss any updates.